Hello and welcome to the live stream. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, teleprompters and how you can use them to be more engaging on uh, not just Zoom calls but also in your live streams by maintaining that eye contact whilst also keeping an eye on all the things that you need to keep an eye on. <laughs> I covered uh, teleprompters I think only once before on my channel when I, uh, I actually did a sort of full setup of the teleprompter that I'm using uh, but I haven't really touched on it again since uh, and I do get asked a lot of questions in the, uh, the comments and things like that about uh, maintaining eye contact and I certainly get access uh, access I certainly get asked about it a lot in uh, zoom calls as well where people are asking um, you know how is it that I appear to be actually looking at them rather than gazing off down to the screen somewhere else so that is what we're going to be talking about today uh, and I'm going to talk through some of the uh, different models that are available and some of the things that you might want to consider if you are thinking about getting a teleprompter because there are certainly a lot of them on the market at uh, lots of different uh, price points as well so uh, there are a few things that you need to be aware of and I'll be covering uh, all of that so first of all let's uh, have a little look at what we're talking about when we talk about teleprompters and specifically um, their intended purpose because we're not actually using them here to be talking about uh, or to be reading scripts or things like that. That isn't the uh, the use case that I have for them. Uh, I have occasionally used it to uh, read scripts from, but uh, that is uh, very, uh, very rarely indeed. So uh, let's have a little look at what we're talking about. This is a professional teleprompter that you might see in your uh, average newsroom <laughs> when you are visiting those sorts of places. Uh, and they are intended for uh, presenters to be able to read what is on uh, the, uh, the screen that's put up in front of them whilst maintaining that eye contact. And and the way they work is uh, pretty simple, really. Uh, you've uh, you've got a few different elements to them. So you've got the uh, the camera there would be uh, position number one. Uh, the lens is at position number two, uh, and that is all inside this uh, this device, this teleprompter. Uh, and this consists of basically just an angled screen uh, number four, which they would call the splitter, um, and then an actual monitor that's displaying information on it, which would be in uh, position number three in that diagram. And the way that it works is because it is dark inside of the teleprompter. Um, then the camera can see out but the uh, person looking into it uh, sort of directing his gaze towards the uh, the lens there uh, can't actually see what's inside because it's dark the same way that if you are in a darkened room with the uh, the lights off uh, looking out of a window then you can see out but uh, people from outside can't necessarily uh, see in uh, so this is the way it works and then so the person that is standing in that position can basically just see only the reflection of the screen down below so what that means is you can put anything on that screen and you can appear to be looking into the uh, uh, into the lens but you're actually seeing the contents of that screen so I can show you kind of what I'm looking at right now uh, if I had bothered to get my uh, <laughs> my phone camera uh, ready to be able to show you uh, here we go just load it up now uh, there we go there we go so that is what I'm seeing now I'm looking into my uh, my teleprompter uh, just like you saw in that image except a little bit smaller <laughs> and uh, I'm basically looking at the contents of that monitor just down there uh, but I'm seeing them uh, reflected in the screen so the lens is just behind that and you can see that I'm not seeing the lens at all what I'm actually seeing is uh, the output that is coming from uh, from uh, from here what I'm doing uh, I can show you from the uh, side view what that looks like as well so there you can see that it is basically just hanging off the front of the lens of my camera uh, and then down here at the bottom you can see that I've got the, uh, the the monitor there so I'll be talking about the different monitors that are um, available and the different uh, teleprompters there are as I say a few different things to think about a few different uh, size considerations that you might want to consider depending on uh, what it is you are going to use it for uh, so I'll talk through some of the uh, different uh, models that are available and uh, the different use cases as well. I should just mention that this is actually kind of like a rerun of a live stream that I did on Amazon because every uh, Sunday I stream on Amazon Live uh, and I uh, have a different thing every Sunday, a deep dive into a particular topic. So this one just last Sunday uh, was actually pretty much the same live stream, to be honest. <laughs> so this is a second run for me, which is a bit un unusual. Uh, you can follow me on Amazon, by the way. I'll drop the link into the uh, the chat there. Um, but yeah, so next Sunday, I'm going to be doing a full tour of the, the full studio and the setup and how I use it for uh, uh, for live streaming and Zoom. So uh, if you are enjoying the sort of stuff that you find on this channel, uh, you may also like the, uh, <laughs> the stuff that I'm doing over on Amazon. And I promise I'm not just going to repeat every week's uh, content from Amazon over here, <laughs> although I have done for two weeks in a row now. Uh, but anyway, that is uh, uh, just something that I needed to uh, mention. Uh, so these are intended, as I say, for reading text on the uh, the screen. So that is their sort of uh, original intended uh, use case. And if I just come over to one of these ones that I've got up here, 
Uh, in fact, maybe this large one might show you a bit better. Uh, so you can see that if I pull up the correct picture, um, they've got the uh, the text there is uh, is scrolling up on that screen uh, so that you can read your script. Um, however, uh, you can also, as we've already seen, you can place anything that you want on that monitor down below and have that reflected in the uh, the screen instead. So that is the sort of use case that I have. Rather than reading it, using it for reading scripts, uh, I'm seeing what the uh, the output is that is uh, going out. Uh, so what is the uh, the purpose of that? Well, certainly for live streams, it means that I can now see exactly what you're seeing. And it means that while, whilst I'm looking into the camera, I can be sure that I've got the correct scene up on the, uh, the screen uh, and I'm showing you the information that I want to show you. And certainly when uh, recording videos, uh, I use it not just for live streaming, but all the videos that I record as well, uh, especially if you're doing screen, uh, screen sharing where you're, you know, doing tutorial style videos and things like that. Uh, there are many cases <laughs> where before I had the teleprompter, um, I would um, be not actually sharing what I was intending to share because uh, I, I just assumed that I was in the correct scene. I hadn't maybe switched from one scene to another. And so it's easy to uh, just inadvertently uh, not be showing what you think you're showing. Still does happen occasionally as well when I'm uh, just looking at the screen rather than the camera, but this certainly uh, certainly helps with that. Uh, it also just helps with you know general sort of framing of the shot and everything that you can be looking into the camera and see it that way. Some people find that it's uh, as well a help to uh, <laughs> to feel like they're speaking to someone even though they're only speaking to themselves. I'm not too sure about that one to be honest, but <laughs> I know that some people find that it's helpful to have you know somebody a person to be looking at when they're filming their video even if that person is themselves. I suppose it's a bit like uh, talking into a mirror really, isn't it? But uh, that might be uh, might be something that is uh, is useful. But for me, it's more just about the uh, the overall content and making sure that I'm seeing uh, what is uh, is going out. Um, the other place though where this really comes into its own is if you are uh, on Zoom calls because You'll find most people on Zoom calls, they've got their webcam wherever it happens to be. Maybe it's, you know, mounted to the top of their laptop. Maybe it's uh, just off the screen. It's, uh, you know, a, a separate one that is mounted to a desktop computer or something like that. And so on the Zoom call, you'll often find that the general look is that people are not looking at you. They're looking down because they're looking at your picture uh, and therefore they're not looking into the camera. Um, so having eye contact with people on Zoom calls really can just sort of transform the experience that the other people are getting because they feel that you're actually talking to them directly uh, and there is a deeper connection that you get by uh, just connecting with people in that way. Uh, and you'll be really surprised how many people actually really notice this as well. People who are not don't realize that you're using a teleprompter, I get asked all the time, how is it that you appear that you are looking at me? And it sounds like such a, a silly question because it should be obvious that I'm, you know, I'm looking into the camera. But then the, the point is, how am I not? How, if I'm looking into the camera, am I therefore not actually looking at their image on the screen? So therefore, I have to go through and I sort of explain uh, the process uh, behind this. But it really does make a difference. People really do notice it. And you do have that connection. And you can obviously kind of uh, fake this to a point by just actually making a point of looking at the camera. Uh, the trouble with that though is if you're not using a teleprompter and just looking at the camera all the time in Zoom, then that does mean that you're not actually looking at the person's uh, face that you're speaking with. You're not actually picking up on their uh, expressions. Uh, and uh, that is also, you know, obviously a vital part of any sort of communication. We uh, we sort of play off each other and uh, see how people are reacting to the things that we are saying. So it really does transform the uh, the experience that uh, you'll have on Zoom. It will transform the uh, the the connection that you will have with people on Zoom as well, and it will also make them feel that that you are being uh, uh, sort of more attentive and that you are speaking directly to them. A bit like now I'm talking into the, the camera and it's, uh, I guess it feels a little bit like I'm talking <laughs> to you rather than uh, talking to somebody off to the side if I was looking over here. Um, and incidentally, I should just uh, mention that uh, I do have an entire masterclass all about Zoom. Uh, I should uh, probably drop that link in here as well. Uh, so this is where I talk all about uh, how to uh, be more effective on Zoom. And it's about using the tools of uh, Zoom itself. So in terms of, uh, you know, breakout rooms, uh, quizzes, all this kind of thing, the, you know, the, the actual features of Zoom as well. Uh, but I also talk about technique as well. So how to uh, how to look more professional, how to sound better, uh, look better on Zoom. So we cover all of that in there. And actually, one of the uh, the the, the main ways that you can look better on Zoom is actually by using Ecamm Live. And Ecamm Live is the live production software that I use to make all of these videos. Uh, you can get a free trial for that at ecamlive.com. Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> I take one tech.io slash Ecamm. Uh, I think it is just ecamm.com if you want to go directly. 
Um, and uh, there's also an Ecamm Live masterclass that I have if it is just that that you want to uh, you want to master. Um, now, if you sign up for the Zoom masterclass, you do actually get access to the full Ecamm Live masterclass as well, because I feel that it is just um, such an integral part of uh, looking great on Zoom. Um, and you can always go and do the Ecamm course. And then if you ever want to upgrade to the Zoom course and do that one as well, uh, then you do get a discount from that. Uh, I often get people asking, um, do I need to have um, the Zoom course if I'm already familiar with Zoom? Actually, if you're already familiar with the usage of Zoom and you just want to know how to use Ecamm with Zoom, uh, then uh, that's actually covered just in the Ecamm Live Masterclass. So uh, that's often the uh, the route that I recommend is give that one a go. And if you, uh, if you want to learn more about Zoom in particular, then you can always go and sort of dig deeper into uh, into that. Uh, but I digress. Uh, let's carry on with the, uh, the the task in hand, which is teleprompters. Uh, so what I thought I'd do was uh, talk you through my setup. Uh, I've had this one for over a year now, I think nearly 18 months, something like that. And uh, I've been really happy with uh, with it so far. But there are a few things that I would probably have done uh, differently or will uh, will be upgrading as well, I should say. Um, and so there's just a couple of things to, to bear in mind. So if we just come over to uh, this particular view here. As you can see, this is the teleprompter and this is the screen. Uh, so you can kind of see roughly the sort of size of the screen uh, there. It's actually a seven inch screen, so seven inch diagonally across. This is the Desview T3 teleprompter and the Lilliput A7. So it's a seven inch field monitor. I'll talk about field monitors in more depth a little bit later. Um, for what I initially wanted it for, this is perfect because uh, first of all, the actual teleprompter itself is a solid plastic shell. It basically just slots over the front of your camera lens. So you don't need any extra uh, sort of mounting for it. Um, most uh, camera lenses will have a, a sort of screw thread on the front that you can apply filters and things like that to uh, that you can screw those onto. So the uh, Desview T3 just comes with a series of rings uh, for all different lens sizes that you screw onto the ring, uh, uh, screw onto the lens rather. And then the, uh, the Desview just basically slides over the top of this ring and uh, makes that seal so it's uh, totally dark inside. Uh, it does also come with attachments so that you can use it with a mobile phone as well. Uh, so there's a separate little mounting uh, bracket that goes onto the back uh, that allows you to uh, use it with all different kinds of uh, mobile. So uh, in that case, whilst here it is hung off the front of the uh, lens of the camera, um, it does also have a quarter 20 uh, thread on the bottom of the, uh, the teleprompter so that you can actually mount the teleprompter onto a tripod instead. And then in that sense, the, uh, the, the phone would actually be mounted to the back of the teleprompter. Um, so really sort of, I, I say it's portable. It hasn't really moved <laughs> apart from when I moved my studio. Uh, but uh, yeah, it is, uh, it is pretty compact and easy to get on and off. Um, so uh, I like that aspect of it. And as I say, the initial reason that I bought this was for, for creating these videos really and for being able to monitor what's going out. Uh, and then also for the, uh, the Zoom eye contact aspect. Uh, the only thing I would say about this is for Zoom, it's fine when I'm talking sort of one-to-one -one with people, uh, but when I'm doing larger uh, Zoom calls where I've got a big gallery of people, um, then you know, when, once you're getting a, uh, a full Zoom gallery with 25 or 49 people on it, uh, they're really pretty small <laughs> on a seven inch display, as you can imagine. And it's a seven inch display that's, uh, you know, kind of slightly more than arm's length away. So it's not like I'm looking at it on a, on a phone or something like that. Um, so it's not ideal for, uh, for that point, uh, but you can get uh, larger ones, which we'll, uh, which we'll have a look at. But what I tend to do with this though, is I'll have the, uh, the speaker view on the teleprompter, or if I'm doing, you know, one-to-one, -one, uh, consultations, uh, then I'll have that on the, the teleprompter. Um, but then if I have got a gallery view, then that will be either on the uh, monitor over to the side, or sometimes I'll put it on uh, the iPad as an extended desktop. I'll put that down underneath. At some point, I am going to be upgrading to a larger teleprompter and also having a separate uh, monitor just down below as well. Uh, that this is more of a fuller, fuller size monitor. I always used to have my uh, camera and teleprompter mounted to the top of my uh, monitor. Uh, so it made a uh, a lot more sense there because the the camera was directly above the uh, the monitor and then I'd have the gallery view uh, down uh, down below. So let's have a look then at some of the uh, <laughs> the uh, other options that we've got for uh, teleprompters and I'll show you the ones I've got. In fact, I should probably I'm just rattling away here. Let me just check in with the uh, the chat shall I? <laughs> hey uh, Dina, great to see uh, great to see you here. And uh, Victor, great to see you too. And David, great to see you. It's great to see everyone. I, I say great to see because it is great to see you all. Um, 
let's have a little look. Oh, by the way, David, I'm very excited about the uh, new Zoom ISO version 2 beta, which has just come out. I haven't started testing it. I downloaded it uh, yesterday, but uh, exciting stuff. And uh, I don't want to go down the Zoom rabbit hole, but uh, yeah, Zoom ISO video and now uh, ISO audio as well. So it's going to make it easier to pull people out of Zoom calls, incorporate them in Ecamm and also route their, uh, their audio in as well. So yeah, exciting stuff. Looking forward to uh, playing uh, around with that. Hey, Eileen, uh, thanks for the heads up, by the way, about the uh, Eileen mentioned on uh, Twitter that uh, we've got a new type of poll in uh, in YouTube in the community tab for um, uh, image polls. So basically, you can put up uh, multiple different images and uh, people can uh, sort of choose uh, from the images. So I'll definitely be uh, using that. And uh, hello, uh, you'll have to excuse me, Marvin. <laughs> I think I think that's right. Uh, I might be wrong about that, but uh, yeah, I always have difficulty remembering some people's names, but uh, hello, M3 Live. I think it's Marvin, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so let's have a look at <laughs> the uh, different teleprompters that are um, that are available at the moment. And I'll start with the one that I'm currently using. So this is the uh, Desview T3, and this sort of shows you a bit better how it sort of fits onto the front. Uh, one thing I like about it is that it does have a, uh, a hard uh, shell, and um uh let me come into this view there we go that's a bit better so you, you can see how it's got these different rings uh, and then the whole teleprompter basically just slides over the top so that's the way that it works melvin ah th thank you melvin uh I, I nearly got there i was only a few uh, a few letters out <laughs> thanks melvin um and uh, oh hey michael i'll just say uh, hello to you as well so the desview t3 teleprompter great if you have little or no space behind the desk uh, yeah and also it's it, the the advantage as well is if you've already got your camera mounted it just mounts sort of onto the front of the lens rather than having to use uh, anything uh, anything else uh with uh, you know in terms of mounting we'll look at some of the other ones that require you mount the actual teleprompter itself um so you can see here that it is intended or they're recommending it, it is used with uh with either an ipad or an iphone uh, and in fact it's got a, a sort of holder here that will accept you know up to the uh, large ipad so you can use that uh, and it does come with this little uh, Bluetooth remote uh, and then you can use that with your iPad there's a, uh, an app that you can get the Desview app that is for teleprompting so if you do want to use this for reading scripts uh, then you will be able to actually use this uh, little device to control that uh, I did download the app just to look at it for when I initially did my first uh, review of the the, the Desview T3 uh, I shall go back and put a link to that in the uh, uh, in the description afterwards I, I forgot to do it before I started but I'll put a link to that video in the uh, in the, uh, the description afterwards um, but yeah I don't really use it for teleprompting so uh, so there is that <laughs> I also use it obviously with a monitor plugged into my computer so the few times that I do use it where I've got to read uh, some sort of script if, if I'm doing something else uh, then I will uh, I'll use a different app uh, there's an app called uh, it's just called teleprompter I think there's a few different teleprompter apps you can get uh, around and uh, I think the one that I'm using is just called teleprompter which uh, does, probably doesn't help with the uh, search <laughs> teleprompter.app is the one that I'm using uh, when I do need to uh, to do that um, so in fact there it is uh, so that just comes up and uh, you can have that as a sort of clear overlay I'll probably talk about that a little bit later you can have it as a transparent overlay over any app so it would mean that if you were wanting to uh, be in a zoom call for example and you've got something you want to deliver a presentation uh, then you can have you still be looking into zoom but this is a sort of transparent overlay and can have scrolling text and things like that so uh, that is uh, that is the sort of teleprompter app um, so as I say, this one comes with an app for an iPad, thinking that you're going to be using it uh, in this way. Um, it's just not something that I've uh, used. So I mentioned that it is a little bit on the small side. Now, actually, technically, I could be using a bigger monitor in this because let me just uh, start switching about conversations a moment. I'll show you the uh, monitor that I'm actually using. Uh, this is the Lilliput A7, uh, a seven inch field monitor. Uh, and as you can see from the image, this is intended for um, use with, um, you know, with a, uh, an actual camera uh, where it sits on top of the camera uh, and you use it for um, for monitoring, you know, what's your, your output from your, your camera. Um, as in, 
in the field as it were <laughs> hence it's got this uh, sunshade as well uh, which is why they're called uh, field monitors uh, and rather than just using the little small screen on the back of your camera you can uh, you can use this device it comes with uh, a load of settings so if you want to have uh, you know be able to see things like a histogram uh, i think there's a pr probably a picture of an image here uh, you know all the sorts of things that you might want for uh, photography uh, different uh, levels and meters and things like that it can show those on there uh, but crucially the thing that we want it for is the fact that uh, well two two points actually first of all it has an hdmi in because when you're using it with your uh, camera then you would have the hdmi cable going from your camera into the uh, the field monitor when you're using it as a field monitor um but um it also has the ability to flip the image either you know vertically or horizontally mirror the, the image and that's something that we need because we need to be able to mirror the image we're looking at it in the uh, the glass here so what is actually displayed on the min on the monitor is the reverse of um what i'm looking at because as i say it's uh, it's being mirrored so uh, that is something that we do need to have the uh, the ability to do so if we come back to uh, the uh, the ipad scenario here um, the issue that you would have if you were going to be using this as an extended monitor is that you would need to be able to uh, flip the image. There are a couple of uh, ways that you can do that, but uh, and it also does mean that your iPad is then tied up as uh, as a uh, as as being used as a teleprompter. Uh, so for me, I just want this thing always in place, set up and ready to go whenever I need it, uh, and so that's why I wanted to just have a sort of dedicated uh, dedicated monitor. And that Lilliput A7 was the uh, the one that I used because it is it sort of fits. If I should show you my uh, camera shot again, you'll be able to see that the actual size of the, the Lilliput here is about the same size as the monitor. So in terms of the sort of packaging of it, it does work really well in terms of, uh, you know, sort of it looks in proportion. Uh, however, what you'll notice is if I'm looking into the screen here, um, the actual image that I'm seeing of the monitor portion, the screen portion of the Lilliput is um, not right, you know, it's not filling up the uh, the reflective area uh, in the screen. So I probably could have gone a little bit larger uh, with the the screen there. So uh, I would say that with the Lilly, with the Desview T3, actually what we could do is go to a slightly larger Lilliput. So perhaps the Lilliput A11. So if I uh, come to here, by the way, in the uh, description, I've left links to all of these different uh, monitors and all of the different teleprompters as well they're all in the uh, in the description not in the chat but in the uh, the description um and that is the lilliput uh, a11 uh, which is actually a 10 inch monitor so i think with that that would actually fill up more of the screen and it would make a sort of difference in terms of uh, in terms of how much you can see on the the screen uh, now this one actually is um it says here it can take up to 4k so it's a 4k hdmi input although the resolution is actually 1920 by uh, 1200. don't worry too much would be my advice advice about uh, resolutions if you think oh it needs to be hd uh, so it needs to be 4k uh, bear in mind that these are really small monitors so once you shrink down uh you know 1920 uh, by 1200 down to a seven inch display it is actually really high resolution uh, and in fact that is one issue that i found with it that if you've got a you know an hd display scaled down to seven inches and then you are um you know putting zoom and things like that on it um then when you start looking at the controls you know the buttons they can always uh, they can actually appear really uh, really small so in fact what i did is i actually altered the resolution so the resolution that i'm putting out to it is actually a lot less than that and if i just get my system preferences up i can uh, show you what i did there so in my displays um, and by the way i should just mention it does just show up as another display so that's the whole point here is it's got an hdmi connector so we're plugging this into our computer uh, and then it's showing up as just a second uh, a second display um, so that is the monitor and if i come into my display settings uh, then it's uh, this one you can see that i've actually set it to 1280 by 800 so that's the resolution that i've set it to and what that means is um obviously the people's faces in uh, in zoom the little uh, windows uh, they're all going to appear to you to be more or less the same perhaps slightly lower resolution but you won't notice it on this smaller display uh, but setting the lower resolution here um, what that does is it makes all of the buttons and all of the interface elements uh, appear bigger and that's going to make it a lot easier to actually uh, to work with uh, so that was just something that uh, that i found was useful actually reducing the the resolution slightly uh, but even so even with that as i say going with a slightly larger monitor i think would have been uh, uh, a, a better move to go for and certainly when i upgrade i'll be looking to uh, go with a larger monitor 
Having said that, when I upgrade, I'll actually be upgrading the monitor and the teleprompter itself. I'll still use this as maybe a secondary one on a second camera or something. Uh, but for um, for the actual main one, I do want to go with something larger. So I thought it'd be worth having a look at the different models that are available. So this is the uh, Desview T3, 8% uh, off just at the moment, $109 on Amazon at the moment. Uh, but there's also the Desview T12. Uh, now this is a 12 inch monitor. Uh, it still comes with the same attachment here to attach a, an iPad, but what you can see is it's actually all built on this frame. So whereas the Desview T3 uh, hangs off the front of the lens, this one, it's actually the entire teleprompter that you mount first, uh, and then the camera sort of fits into the back of it. Maybe I can get a better image of this up. Uh, so that's the way you set it up. You put the, uh, the base plate on your tripod, uh, open this part out, and then you add the sort of hood and everything like that to it. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you can mount the, the camera behind it. But apart from that, uh, just the same as I'm using a, a field monitor with it, you would be able to do that with this one as well, because it's got the same sort of tray to hold a, uh, an iPad that you could just simply replace that with a, uh, with a, with a field monitor. Um, there are lots of different brands available. And if I scroll down here on this page, um, you'll see that there are a whole load of other recommended uh, teleprompters here, all different prices as well. Um, so the thing that will differentiate a lot of these teleprompters is the glass of that splitter plate. So if I come back to uh, this image here to show you, uh, that splitter plate number four at the front, uh, split or splitter glass, splitter lens, whatever they call it, um, that is the uh, the thing that could cause you some issues if you go with a, a cheap model or one that doesn't have a good quality splitter in it, because that's, uh, you know, basically the lens that you're uh, the glass that your lens is looking through or your camera's looking through. So if you've got a really high quality camera um, and then you're <laughs> shining it through uh, or looking through rather a, a piece of poor quality glass, uh, then it's going to screw up the, uh, the optics slightly. It's also, you can have an issue where it actually affects the quality of the image that the person looking into it is seeing, the reflective image. So it's important to have one that does have a high quality uh, glass in it. I haven't had any particular issues with this one that I've got by all accounts. Uh, everyone else who's tested it uh, agrees that, uh, you know, the, uh, the glass in it is, is uh, good quality. Uh, there was a Desview T2, which was out before this, uh, before the T3, funnily enough. <laughs> um, and that one had, um, uh, you know, the, the, the glass has been improved basically to this model. So if you're looking at the T2 or T3, uh, it might be just worth bearing in mind that the T3 apparently has a better quality uh, glass in it uh, and there is a better quality of reflection. Uh, so you're looking at a better quality image and uh, that will reflect also in the, uh, the, the sort of output that your camera is getting by looking through the lens. Uh, so if you are seeing some that look like a real total bargain uh, at a lower cost, just do uh, do bear that in mind. But as I say, uh, that's right, the beam splitter glass. Thank you, uh, Michael, <laughs> for uh, keeping me in check there. I uh, often get confused by that. Um, so uh, that is the Desview T12. I may look at that. There is also another one, a larger one, a T, I don't know if it's a T17 or something. Uh, it might be 17 or 16, I can't remember, but there is another one. I can't see it on Amazon, but it's on the Desview uh, site. Uh, but I'm all for now just going going large and getting something really quite uh, at large, specifically for the uh, the Zoom aspect and being able to see all the people in the gallery view on the screen at the same uh, at the same time. Uh, also with uh, Discord, one of the things about uh, Discord voice channels, which are um, like uh, like Zoom calls really, except um, uh, in your Discord server, I should probably say at this point, <laughs> if you are not already in the Discord, then head over to takeonetech.io slash family and uh, join the uh, the community over there. And uh, we do have, uh, we've actually got going on right now, a voice channel in the Discord for my live streamer backstage, uh, or sorry, my backstage pass uh, members. And you can uh, join my YouTube members by uh, hitting the join button just down below this video. And one of the levels there is the backstage pass level. And that gives you access into the backstage area of the live streams. So as well as streaming now to YouTube, it's also going into uh, there. Uh, I digress slightly. <laughs> that was all to say that uh, with the uh, voice channels in Discord, uh, one of the things there is they've got a chat window, just like you have in Zoom, but it can't be popped out. So it means that if you've got the chat window open, then everybody gets uh, squished up even smaller into the uh, uh, into the the, the the window that you're looking at. So if you've got that in the teleprompter, then having a bit of extra uh, screen real estate, I hate that term, but I'll use it anyway, screen real estate, um, then having that bit of extra space would be uh, would be helpful for that as well. 
Um, so let's have a look at some of the other uh, options available because these are just Desview that I've talked about because it's the one that I've used and been happy with. Uh, but another popular brand is Glide Gear and they make a whole series of different uh, sizes. Uh, there is this one, which is the uh, cutest little teleprompter I've ever seen <laughs> that hangs over the front of your uh, laptop uh, so that it covers the, uh, the, the built-in camera. Um, and then it, you can put your mobile, I don't think it'll take an iPad, but it'll take a little mobile phone. Uh, and then you can use that for, this is going to really be for teleprompting rather than actually, um, you know, having the, the eye contact thing, because by the time you've strapped this to your uh, laptop and it's covering most of the screen, uh, then it's probably going to do more, uh, more harm than good. But if you do are interested in a laptop version uh, to use as a teleprompter, uh, then this could be a, a good little, uh, good little one to, uh, to look at. Uh, but the next uh, sensible one, though, is this the uh, TMP. Uh, in fact, this is a Glide Gear V2. I think this replaces, does it, the TMP 200 or 100, which is a popular choice. Uh, this is about the same size, I think, as the uh, the Desview T3. Uh, one of the differences here is it does have this sort of fabric cover as opposed to it being a um, uh, the uh, uh, solid plastic uh, and also this has this method of mounting where you basically mount the teleprompter first onto a tripod uh, and then you have the camera that pops in and out of the back uh, that may well be a benefit you know if you're constantly taking your camera in and out uh, then having the teleprompter permanently set up and just being able to pull the camera out might be uh, better than having to you know take the teleprompter off the front so uh, that's just down to uh, I suppose which one uh, works for you and uh, let's have a look at the size of this so um i think it is about the about the same size it certainly takes you know an ipad or an iphone uh, just a different kind of uh, way that it has been uh, been built there is also uh, a few other sizes as well so you've got the tmp 500 and this one goes up to uh where's the size it tells you the size of the the screen 10.5 by 9.5 inches for the screen versus uh, 10.5 by ver by uh, 7.5 uh, so uh, those that is the sort of relative size of those and then there's this one this large one the 17 inch so I'll probably go for something like this actually for my uh, my next one uh, that would just yeah have uh, just a lot more space in it this one comes with a hard case but like I say I've never really uh, moved mine around I guess some people using these as teleprompters on location or whatever might be carrying them around but Mine's pretty much staying exactly where it's put. <laughs> um, but yeah, something like that. You can see this comes with different attachments to hang off, you know, other things off the front, uh, like uh, another field monitor perhaps to uh, see what's going out. So if if you were just reading the uh, the text on there, you might want to uh, monitor down here to see what is going out. But as I say, for me, it's uh, that's all just going to be in the actual teleprompter itself. And then next one we've got is this one. Oh, this is the uh, the, the Glide Gear 100. So this is the, I think this V2, I think perhaps replaces or is the sort of next iteration of this, uh, this TMP 100. So I know that lots of people use this one and have been uh, very happy with that. And in terms of the sort of the thing I was talking about earlier with uh, the quality of the beam splitter glass uh, uh, and so on, then this one, you won't have any trouble with that. Can't necessarily speak to any of the other ones. Uh, there is one though, actually, that I know a couple of people have used before, which is this, uh, I never quite know how to say this, newer with an extra E, newer. <laughs> uh, but there is this one as well, which is like a, a sort of mini version, uh, again, for use with, uh, with an iPhone. Uh, so if you just want a sort of small portable option, probably can take an iPad mini, perhaps. Um, it says it's seven inch. So, uh, so yeah, that's probably about the same size as this Desview as well. This one having a hard shell as well. So, um, whether that's a, a plus or a minus, <laughs> I'll leave that to you. Uh, but yeah, so that is, um, that is just another option at around about the same price. And as I say, I've heard good things about, uh, all of these different models and these different brands. Uh, but some of these other brands, I can't necessarily speak to in terms of uh, whether they are any good or not. Uh, in fact, there's another newer, that's a Amazon's choice. Let's just have a little look at that one. I hadn't seen that one. That is another 12 inch uh, version. So uh, since we are here, um, that is a, uh, yeah, a little bit, a uh, bit larger. What does that come with? A remote as well, bracket for holding the phone. Uh, some of these, as I say, come with uh, hard cases um so the remote again is not a a, a deal breaker for me at all because I, i'm not going to be using it like that um i do tend to prefer the ones that have got a sort of hard shell on them though just because i have seen uh, a few people talking about if they've got a large teleprompter that's got one of these kind of more canvas shells on them that sometimes the canvas can kind of droop in the middle you can uh, obviously 
put something inside to stiffen it, I guess. But um, yeah, it's just, uh, I, li I like the ones that are sort of more rigid on the outside from that point of view. Um, so those are the, uh, the sort of different uh, teleprompters that are available. Um, let's have a look at the uh, different monitors then, because there are a few different options with, uh, with those as well. Uh, so there is this uh, Lilliput A7 field monitor. That's the one that I'm using. Uh, I noticed that um, uh, I noticed someone in the chat mentioned that they were using that one as well. Uh, Victor, oh yes, yeah, so you're using the uh, uh, the <laughs> the uh, the Lilliput as well. Um, so I did, in fact, I just missed your other comment there, Victor. Uh, does it come in a 32 inch screen size? <laughs> he likes to screen, see himself while he's doing his live speaking in Zoom. Uh, so the the biggest ones that I've actually seen are. Um, about 17 inch. That's the largest one that I've uh, I've been able to uh, been able to find. The thing about having a much larger screen is the point of having them is to be able to maintain this eye contact. So if I'm looking at my little monitor, if I look into the far corner of the monitor, then I'm still looking kind of into the screen. Uh, as soon as I start going bigger, you know, if I had a, 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 a monitor that was uh, kind of like this big, <laughs> he says, if I had a monitor that was like this big behind a massive teleprompter and I was sitting this close to it, then if I was looking over at the side, it would still end up being looking like I'm looking off. So there is a, a sort of trade-off between having something large so that you can actually see um, and it just um, it just actually losing its effectiveness. So uh, there is a bit of a sweet spot there to have where you're still getting that looking like you're looking into the lens, um, but only just looking off to the side a little bit. <laughs> so there is a, uh, yeah, as I say, there's a bit of a, a balance to be had there. Um, so, uh, Craig, hello, Craig. I think this is your first time on the stream. Great to see you here. I uh, agree with you hundred percent with you, but the Lilliput a seven is too small for me when using for zoom and watching more than two or four people in the meeting. So I'm using the Lilliput 10 with glide gear 100. Yeah, that's, um, that's the conclusion that I've come to <laughs> as well. Uh, so that, yeah, I just tend to have it for a uh, speaker view or if I've got four people, then it's, it's okay. But yeah, you don't really get the same, uh, uh, same, uh, same view of the people as you would if it was on a larger screen. So um, I'm thinking the the one that you mentioned there, the A, the Lilliput 10.1 um, would work with this one as well, the Desview T3. But because if it works with the Glide Gear 100, then I'm guessing it would work for uh, for there. So um, so yeah, and hey, Aubrey, just uh, noticed you as I scroll down the chat. Great to see you as well. Uh, let's have a look at some. <laughs> Every time I say let's have a look now, I uh, it just reminds me because uh, <laughs> Rich was saying it's something I say all the time. Let's have a little look at this. <laughs> so if I come over to this screen, you can see there is the uh, Lilliput A7. And then this is the one that uh, Craig was just talking about, the Lilliput A11, uh, the 10.1 inch. So uh, that certainly would work with, uh, as you were saying, the, uh, uh, the uh, glide gear and then I think it would also work with the Desview T3 as well by the way um, it does have a battery on the back so or a battery port on the back I should say and they use uh, you know sort of standard camera ba camera batteries I think the Lilliput uses kind of Sony type batteries um, but because they are intended to be used as field monitors out in the out in the field <laughs> where you don't have power uh, they do generally all have uh, battery attachments on the back or a place to plug in a battery but they will also have a socket for um, a separate power supply so uh, some of these come with power supplies and some of them don't uh, so if I come to the a7 for example uh, this particular one uh, does come with a this is kind of like a, a kit if you like that comes with the power supply uh, you can buy them individually without the power supply as well um, but uh, you obviously do need that. So you might, if, if you find one that doesn't come with a power supply, you just have to make sure you check on the, uh, the voltage requirement and then make sure you do buy that uh, power supply as well. Um, and uh, Russell, just quickly to answer your question, um, how do you connect the monitor to your computer if your computer doesn't have an HDMI output? You just need to get some sort of dongle. I mean, you can get um, USB-C to HDMI uh, or, or regular USB to HDMI, in fact. So uh, it'd just be a case of getting a, a dongle like that um, because there, there is only HDMI that goes, uh, goes into it. Um, by the way, um, I should mention as well that these do have uh, both an input and an output on them. So if I come over to um, uh, this image here, you can see that there is actually two HDMI ports on the side and uh, that is for HDMI in and HDMI out. 
Um, and I've got to say that when I uh, first got this, I assumed that I would be able to uh, use it as a pass through so that the, the feed was going into the monitor, but also going out as well. Uh, it's either one or the other. If, the mon if you're using the, uh, the pass through, then it's kind of like the, uh, the monitor isn't on in this, on this particular model that I'm using here. There's, there doesn't seem to be a way, unless anyone can correct me, to actually have it so that the uh, HDMI signal can go into the field monitor and then out to something else. And why you might want to do that is if you were uh, perhaps using uh, Ecamm virtual, uh, not Ecamm virtual cam, using the Ecamm um, uh, monitor output to, to output from Ecamm onto the uh, the monitor. And I'll talk about that in a little moment as well. Um, but then you also want that to maybe go to a big screen or maybe you want to have that going to uh, the input on a separate computer. So you want to be running Ecamm on one uh, computer but feeding into another. Uh, it seems that on the Lilliput A7, unless I've completely missed something, but I know a few other people have uh, found this as well, uh, the pass-through, it's either one or the other. Either you're passing through and going to something else, or it's uh, it's displaying on the display. So if you do want to do something like that, you would need uh, an HDMI uh, splitter in that case. Uh, nobody asked that question, but I thought I'd answer it anyway. <laughs> um, so let's have a look, he says again, at some other monitors. So this is um, the Lilliput A12. So what I'm thinking with, with going with the larger, uh, the larger monitor is using the Lilliput A12 with um, this Desview T12. Either that one or perhaps um, the, uh, the, this one here, the, uh, the Glide Gear TMP750. There are a few larger monitors as well. Um, in fact, I don't think I've got one that's selected in here. Uh, so there's a few other seven inch monitors. So that was the A12, a 12 inch. There are a few other smaller monitors uh, around the seven inch si size. So this uh, newer again, uh, and also um, uh, our lunar display is uh, <laughs> something. If you are using your iPad, then this allows you to uh, basically use your iPad as an extended display. Not something I've used. I know a lot of people use this to use their iPad as their display. I thought I'd got another couple of monitors up there, but um, uh, Desview themselves do make uh, field monitors as well. And there are a few other uh, brands that, uh, that do. In terms of how I'm using it then with Ecamm, uh, I'm using, uh, well, sometimes I use the virtual monitor, but sometimes not. So let me just uh, come into Ecamm for a second. Um, if you look in the Ecamm uh, output menu, you've got an option for uh, video monitors. So if you're using this with Ecamm, then there is a video monitor and you can turn that on and basically select any monitor that is attached to your computer. And then that allows you to put the Ecamm output feed just as is going out on the live stream or in the recording and have that go full screen onto that monitor. So that is generally the way that I use it. However, sometimes uh, like right now, uh, I've actually just moved my Ecamm sort of the, the main Ecamm window over onto there. And I find that sometimes uh, I prefer one over the other. Uh, but one of the uh, reasons why uh, uh, I do like that sometimes on live streams is because it means that I can see, you know, figures like the uh, the time of being live, see that I am actually live <laughs> and also see things like, you know, number of people watching all of those little stats that you get up on the actual Ecamm uh, interface. Um, the thing about it is that only appears when you uh, sort of hover the mouse over the interface in any case. Uh, so there is uh, that, that part to it. Um, but uh, yeah, generally what I'll do is I'll, when I'm recording my videos is I will just be using the video monitor out. Uh, for Zoom calls then, what I do is there is a dual screen option in uh, in Zoom so that uh, I can select to have uh, two separate sort of Zoom windows. Uh, and then I would have the speaker view on the teleprompter uh, and then the gallery view would be either, as I say, down below or off to, to one side. Um, if you are on a call with uh, one person, um, then uh, what, what I'll do is I'll have the speaker view uh, uh, or the... Uh, the, the main zoom window where I can see the other person uh, and then I'll have the uh, the second window still open and what that means is when people are sharing their screen because a lot of the time when I'm on zoom uh, I'm doing uh, consultations and incidentally if you have got any uh, questions or anything that you need help with in terms of uh, your zoom setup or anything else like that uh, then you can um, book a consultation with me at takeonetech.io slash consultation uh, and we'll jump on a zoom call and talk it through so often in doing that there is uh, there is you know, screen sharing that goes on uh, and so I'd have the the person speaking I would be looking at in the uh, in the teleprompter uh, and then off to the side then I'd have their sort of desktop that they're sharing to talk them through whatever it is they're trying to uh, trying to figure out incidentally 
in Zoom when you are in uh, the you know, the regular view. Uh, if you want to sort of hide yourself from the uh, uh, from the the view that you're seeing, because normally you'll see all the participants, including yourself. Uh, well, if you are just speaking one to one with some uh, someone, then having them sort of full screen in that window can be helpful. And what you'll find is in the sort of top corner, it would be kind of up there. There would be uh, three little dots next to every participant. Um, and so you want to click on your own uh, image or your own video uh, feed, click on the three dots. Uh, and then if you go down the little uh, menu that pops up, you'll see one that says hide self view. And uh, that just basically removes your uh, your image. So normally, if you think about having a Zoom window with uh, just one person, there is you and the other person side by side. Uh, so that means that you're both really quite squashed down. And as soon as you hide your self view, then it takes the other person sort of full screen in that window. So that's certainly uh, something that's helpful to do when you are speaking one-to-one uh, -one, or even if you're with, uh, you know, it comes into its own as well when you're speaking with four other people. And then you being on the screen is a fifth that's just making everyone else smaller. So just hiding that, uh, hiding your self view will uh, will help uh, with that. Um, so uh, let's have a little look. Speaker view on the prompter is key. Yes, entirely rich. That is the uh, that is the one just to be able to concentrate on that. Um, um, although actually, do you know what? Now that I say that, um, when I'm doing things where I'm actually presenting. Uh, if I'm doing something in Ecamm where I want to see the output, then I might have myself up there. But sometimes I'll actually switch it when I'm doing something where I want to be able to gauge other people's reactions to the thing that I'm talking about. And I'm kind of the speaker, if you like. Uh, but I want to be able to see what's uh, what other people are, uh, how people are reacting to that. So now that I'm having said that, I always have the speaker view there. Sometimes I do switch it around for that particular uh, purpose. Um so uh, an orbs you've got the lilliput seven on your main and then the 10 inch on the side uh so oh you got got is that two separate teleprompters on the on two cameras is it and that's what i'm thinking of doing here is actually moving this to a secondary camera um that i still haven't got set up either but <laughs> that will be something i'll set up and then have a larger one on the uh, on this uh, this display um so let's have a look at what else I've got up on here. I think I've actually covered all of these uh, these different uh, different models. Um, I know that this, uh, as I say, the 10 inch uh, or the sorry, the the Desview T3. And by the way, I've got to give a, a shout out to uh, Keith Pelzer, <laughs> the uh, the studio master. Uh, I've got a serious studio envy every time I see his studio. Uh, but he was the one that put me onto the Desview T3, uh, and he's got um, he's got uh, another uh, teleprompter that he uses, and it's the one of the larger ones. But uh, he was the one that sort of put me onto this and said he just found the compact size of it just for doing what we're doing here. You know what I'm doing, looking into the the screen for Ecamm is just a sort of a perfect size. Um. Let me have a little look. I think I've covered everything off my uh, my little list. I do make notes for these uh, live streams because otherwise I get sidetracked. So, <laughs> but I think I've covered everything off. Uh, so in summary, then I, uh, I highly recommend uh, thinking about a teleprompter specifically for Zoom because it really re really will transform the uh, the connection that you have with all of the people that you are on the uh, on the Zoom call with. Uh, if there's any further questions or anything like that about teleprompters in the chat, happy to uh, so field those before. Uh, before signing off otherwise uh, I will say it does also transform your uh, uh, live streaming and recording to be able to see the ecamm output I, I didn't really uh, didn't really realize what a big thing that would be until I started doing it and then now it's kind of like if I haven't got the output up on this screen it does look a little bit uh, a little bit uh, a little bit funny sometimes I posted a, uh, a short recently from uh, my live streamer backstage podcast which I should uh, just also mention so that is something that I'm doing uh, live streaming to uh, both Amazon and LinkedIn and this week it was with uh, James Hicks talking about technology that streaming that is driving live streaming we talked about the software and the hardware uh, so that was recorded just this last Tuesday. It is live every Tuesday, Eastern Standard, on uh, Amazon Live and on LinkedIn. So if we're not uh, connected there, then uh, definitely uh, definitely do connect with me over there as well. Uh, this next Tuesday coming up, it is the wonderful Keely Dunn talking all about uh, Discord and building communities on Discord. Uh, I wouldn't have mine without uh, without Keely, so I owe a debt of gratitude for that. And it took me a long time to come round to it. <laughs> uh, but once I did, I, I saw the light. So if you are thinking about building a community, then uh, you definitely want to uh, watch that, uh, that episode 
on uh, next Tuesday. We're recording that and then the podcast will go out the following week. You've probably seen the actual recordings going out on this channel because I'm posting them here. Uh, another great bit of advice from Keely. <laughs> Hashtag Keely was right. Um, but um, yeah, the uh, the recordings go out there and then it is also available as a recorded podcast and you can get the podcast. I'm dropping all the links in <laughs> today. Uh, you can uh, get the actual link for the podcast over at Livestreamer Backstage uh, 2. Um, so I digress slightly. <laughs> how, how did I get onto that? Um, because... I can't remember. I can't remember how I uh, how I got onto that, but there you go. We are we are there anyway. <laughs> so uh, thank you all for uh, coming. Oh, so Victor's just uh, mentioned. Not sure if it's the same. I use mine on my camera. I connect the camera to the in and then HDMI uh, out to a cam link on my back to bring eCam. Maybe uh, thinking of uh, something else. Um, oh, you're using your your camera to go directly into it. Are you? Is that is that uh, what you're saying there? So you use your, on your camera, connect the camera to the in and then the HDMI out to a cam link. I see. So you're bringing your camera into it first and then that's going into the thing. So that is interesting, though, because that would indicate then that you're seeing the output from the camera and it's also feeding into eCam. Whereas the thing that I was saying was for me, it seemed like whenever I plugged in a, an HDMI to the output, um, I wasn't seeing anything on the screen. Maybe I'll have to go and have a little dig into that. But uh, thanks for thanks for letting me know about that, Peter. Um, well, I will leave a link to all those uh, watching on the replay to some uh, other videos. In fact, maybe the video specifically about the Desview T3 and the setup process with that. Uh, thank you to all of my uh, channel members. I really appreciate you and the support. And uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to have you all here. Thanks, everyone. See you later. Bye bye.